So this is we were talking about Thanksgiving, yeah. and uh, tell me a little bit some of the safety measures people should remember during the turkey. Well, if you're going to get your turkey frozen, make sure you thaw it completely, but don't thaw it out on the counter in your kitchen. Don't thaw it in the car overnight. Thaw it in the refrigerator, bottom shelf with some sort of pan or um, bowl or something beneath it so you don't get turkey juices everywhere. Uh, when you take out your turkey, you, if you cut open the, the wrapping, remove the, the stuff that's inside. Hopefully the, the bits and pieces will be in a little pouch or something, but make sure that you, you know, if you're not going to use them, dispose of them. Uh, but then after you clean your turkey, wash down all the surfaces around. Wash down everything that the turkey juices could have touched or the turkey itself. Um, wash down the counter if you had it on the counter. Wash down the sink. I mean, it sounds strange, strange but wash the sink and scrub it. Make it clean. Um, if you're going to use the brine, dispose of the brine instead of just pouring it down the sink and forgetting about it. Try the... Um, you know, try the garbage disposal, try the uh, try throwing it outside, but make sure it's not somewhere where animals may get into it. Let's talk a little bit um, about the brine. What can you uh, tell me? How, what is that, uh, the brine? What is that? You can use brine on a number of different large cuts of meat. Um, it's often done on, on big pork and, and the such. And um, with a turkey, you may want to stick with traditional flavors, and that's what I've done in the in the orange peel and the um, molasses and different flavors like that. And you can you can use a number of different kinds of uh, ingredients for the flavoring, but try to stick with the basic recipe for the salt and the sugar in the water. Um, it creates a solution that's going to go into the turkey and help to make it moist. And it's a you get down to science when you're when you're talking about the exchange of um, of the moisture content with the with the salt, and it uh, it'll really make your turkey a lot more moist when you when you end up with with your final product. It's nice. I was interested in your dressing you, for people who like stovetop. Tell me a little about that. At my house, it's always been stovetop. You know, years ago before I cooked, it was always just basic by the box recipe. But I've, I've spiced it up a little bit using sausage and apples and sage. Um, if you can, if you can find fresh sage, use it. You can probably get it at the grocery store. You can probably get it, um, you know, in any kind of fresh market anywhere that they sell sell herbs. Um, that's the way to go. You just brown it all up together and then toss the the crumbs of the stovetop together and um, add the stock at the end. And stock's really going to make a difference. Instead of using just water, use um, either turkey stock or chicken stock. It's going to make it. It's going to give it a lot more flavor. And then I I roast or I bake it in um, a casserole dish to give it that crunchy top. That's part of the bit that I like. We can't forget the gravy. I didn't forget the gravy. <laughs> um, this gravy is made with with either chicken stock or turkey stock and use the the drippings from your uh, from your turkey. Um, I've also given instructions on how to make the gravy in the roasting pan itself and that way you can well, you're not only saving a, a, another pot to wash but you're going to be able to get up a lot more of the turkey bits when you're scraping the bottom and when you pour in the the liquid after you've added the the fat and the flour make sure you you scrape real well on the bottom of the roasting pan to get up all those bits.